Not a lot. You're gonna be delighted, get excited. Maybe, but not a lot. You're gonna see a whole lot of magic. Look at this trick and that trick. And when he says it's not a lot, you'll agree it's such a lot. Meet the man who excels. Oh, that for tuning in and it's a big welcome to a Christmas Paul Daniels magic show in which of course we have as usual super guests but I think this year our producers excelled himself in finding the very best around the world in the world of speciality we have of course a jury and they're here as usual to check up on the fact that I don't cheat or if I do the fact that they can't spot it what's your name sir <laughs> Nick oh I've heard of you <laughs> yeah <laughs> old Nick Yes, you're, 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 you're not the, the one that dresses in the red, though, and becomes Santa Nick. No? No? Okay. Randall or Hopkirk? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a thought. I like this part of the show. What time is it? Oh, you've got a watch. Yes. Good. Right. That's all we need to know. The man's got a watch. Now, just take your watch off. That's the idea. And I'm not going to touch your watch at all. What's your first name? Peter. Peter. Stood up, Peter. And just take the little bag yourself and pop the watch inside. It's very tiny, so fold your watch strap right inside and make sure it fits inside. And then draw the string tight so that I cannot get in there and get at the watch. Do you understand yes, that? Yes, I understand. You understand yes. that? Yes. Great. Would you come a little closer, Peter? Yes, I've had a bath. Thank you. Right. Now, <laughs> now, what I want you to do, Peter, is very simple. We have here also a little Christmas stocking. And, of course, being Christmas stocking, it's got a net front. Just drop, the, drop it in there, would you? Do that for me. Thank you. Fine. All right? Thank you. Yes. Now, I haven't touched your watch. True? I haven't touched it. You put it in the bag, you put it in the stocking. Correct. True? And it's right down the bottom. Oh, it's not. It should be. Now, if we get it right down... <laughs> Just a minute. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you, Pete, but there's a couple of things happen. Um, oh, I've stood on it. Sorry, Pete. Um, there's a hole... There's a hole in the stocking, dear Peter, dear Peter. And... I, I can't apologise. I've stood on it again. Um, <laughs> pick that up. This has gone wrong. Um, just, just come over here and, and we'll try and put it together magically, as it were. Fine? All right? Super. Right. And, did you, um, and, and what do you do for a living? I'm a merchant tailor. A merchant tailor? Oh, fantastic. You only make suits for merchants. No. No, no. <laughs> no in that case... We I make them for magicians as well. Do you really? Yes. What do you reckon then? Very nice. It's nice, very isn't elegant. it? Very elegant. Thank you. Now, this is your watch that you put in uh, into um, a little bag. And once you got it in the little bag, I'm sorry, bits and pieces in there, because when you dropped it in, there was a hole in the sock uh, and it fell on the floor. <laughs> and, and, and then I stood on it. That was an accident. <laughs> and then you picked it up and brought it over here and you gave it to the same idiot that dropped it on the floor <laughs> in the first place and stood on it. That's, right. That's it. You're looking worried, Peter. Don't worry. Because being a magician, I do have certain magical powers at my disposal. Good that, isn't it? All I do is I take this little box. I don't want to open the lid too far because it will let the bird out. All right? There's a little bird in there and I don't want him to get out yet. Because he is not just a bird. That is, in fact, Peter, a very clever watchmaking bird. <laughs> a rare breed. Just come over here, Peter, and point your finger at that box. And the bird, the dove, will leave the box, fly over the heads of the audience, point your finger, this is not a house-trained dove. <laughs> point your finger at the box, Peter, and the... <laughs> 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 you shot the bird, Peter. <laughs> SPCA will be on to you, Peter. Yes, shot a bird with a loaded finger. Well, well, that's it, Peter. Sit down. Now this is um. <laughs> do have mine, Peter. It's um, it's it's about. Uh... <laughs> that would be useful to a merchant yes, yes. tailor, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes. Doesn't tell the time. Doesn't tell the time. Never mind. On with the show. Do sit down, Peter. Do sit down. You'll be quite all right there. That's fine. Now then, could I borrow your watch? <laughs> it's 
taking it up. <laughs> we are now all known Nick's a nut. No, um... No, I couldn't do it twice, Peter. Once is more than enough. However, we do have some presents by the Christmas tree, which are for all the staff here. You know how generous the BBC are. And, 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 and I thought what we would do is instead of that, I would... Uh, give you, Peter, a cracker. If we collect all the crackers off the Christmas tree, you see, by collecting that, how many have we got now? Four, oh, we won't need some more. Five, I have another one, one down there, six, six lovely crackers. Now, we've got all these crackers from the Christmas tree. And, and, and I'm going to let you have a cracker, Peter. Crikey, it's a bit difficult to carry all these at once. It's a good job I'm going to give them away. What I want you to do, Peter, is just have a cracker. It doesn't matter which cracker you take, as long as you get one. And when you've got a cracker, one, two, three, top, bottom, take it if you want it. Oh, you've changed your mind. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, all right then. Hmm. All right, he's changed his mind. Now, um, you have one. You can, yes, you have one. Whee! All right. Okay. Right. Your crackers. That's true. <laughs> and, and I want you to just stood up with the cracker you chose, Peter. Now, here's the one you chose. And in fact, you went doop, doop, doop and had a free choice. Right? That's true. But this is a cracker. I want you to pull it with me by grabbing the end very hard indeed. Right? Hard. And just pull, pull the cracker. That's it. A proper cracker. And inside there's a motto which says, time flies. <laughs> and what else have we got for you? Time flies is not funny at this moment of time. And we've got this. What's this? This is, um, oh, this is rather nice. This is a, a hat. Uh, a party hat. Put that on, Peter. Pretend you're enjoying yourself. <laughs> And last, but by no means least, a watch. No, but if you get Mickey Mouse's... <laughs> Just a thought. And, um, well... Oh, and you've got a little yellow bag. Put the hat on. <laughs> Some people do in desperate need to get their watch back. You just unfold the little packet like this. I'm doing this at fingertips. I want everybody to know I'm not cheating. Just go in there and take out whatever is in that little bag. And you will find it is a watch. Unroll it, and you'll find... Is it your watch? It's my it watch. is. Thank yes. you for taking part in the first part of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter. Thank you. My first guest tonight is considered by the circus profession to be the finest in her own particular field. Ladies and gentlemen, from Japan, the ballerina on the golden bicycle... Lily Yokoi.
this show. As you well know, on this show, we do try to bring you acts that are both novel and unusual, and this next guest is no exception to the rule. He's what is known as a protean entertainer. And I didn't know what that was either. He explained that means he's mastered the art of quick change, instantaneous costume changes, and he's about to play a sketch from Dickens of Oliver Twist. Now, in this sketch, he plays all the characters himself. There's absolutely no camera trickery at all even though it might look like it. What you see is what the audience here will see and our jury will see. Our studio audience are here to check on that. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the master of the quick change, the man himself, Michael McGivney. Hi there, is there no one about? I was told at the cripples I'd find Fagin here. Fagin, Fagin! Curse the man, he'll have us all hanged. Must be Fagin now. Damnation! It's Nancy! She mustn't find me here. I must hide. sound. Hope I didn't overdo the drug. Oh, I don't think so. He's sleeping sound. Why, the bottle, it's empty. And Bill wants some dick or two when he wakes. I think I've got time to pop out and get some before he wakes. Who is it? <laughs> Hello, Feigen. Are you there? It's Fagin. <laughs> Look at here. <laughs> the ferocious Mr. Bill Sykes sleeping in his bed just like a little child. <laughs> what a strange smell. <laughs> ah, Laudanum. A sleeping. Why, Nancy's drugged Bill. You're a clever girl, Nat. Clever? I suspected you for a long time, and now there's proof. Clear proof. Sykes. Bill Sykes is the man for the job. <laughs> now I've got you, Nancy. Bill, wake up, Bill. Caution. If I awaken him, he'll flare up like a tiger. <laughs> I'll awaken you. You dearly love a joke, don't you? I'll waken you with a crowbar. I said, what was that? What the devil's come over me? I could have swore I heard someone in there. Someone's in. And by God, I'll have them out. Bill. Bill. And says Pete's done his pills. He's informed on us all. If what was the Nazi tried to poison you, throw you. Fool. Fagin! My God, you old fools! What did he say? Nancy, informed? House fire. Nancy, what you been up to? Why, she's gone. To inform. God, I'll choke. Well, I'll find you. And I'll grind your brains to dust. <laughs> Something's gone wrong. 
As I stood in the shadows, he rushed past with a terrible look in his eye. If he's out of my work at this night, I'm as good as dead. It's all horrible. It's all horrible. Jolly right now. What's the row now, eh? What's the blooming row? Well, come on then, throw it up. Throw up the bag. Right, I got you. Right out, Jolly, watch out for the Bow Street Runners. Look out, big blooming finger! <laughs> cool, lovey. Here, yeah, thought he had both my fingers. Here we are, Bill, here we are. Ooh, all the boy from Snow Hill. Why, we some little presents for Mr. Feigen. A drop of me favourite lash. <laughs> right you are. Come to father. Stay where you are. I can manage. Stay where I tell you. and point out very strongly that that was only one man and there were no camera tricks used at all in that routine in fact we don't use any in the show anywhere but that was one man working very hard behind the set we are now going to take a trip into the world of mentalism where by the power of the mind you can either read a mind or control the mind and in this particular instance i'm going to use one of our jury members your name is leonie, leonie. did i say that right yeah. Ooh, good now leonie we're going to use a pack of cards a pack of cards because anyone at home can identify with them all right we're not using them as a magician's prop we're merely using them as a means of of you being able to identify something very quickly this is a prediction i've made that it's there it's immovable it cannot go any place else and all the jury here are watching it around the prediction imagine a clock 
Imagine a clock, Leonie, around there, and think of any hour at all around the clock, from one right around to twelve. So you've got a choice of twelve different hours. You've thought of one. Don't tell me what it is. I want you to take the pack of cards, and for every hour you thought of, you know, if you thought of three o'clock, I want you to deal three cards face down, carefully onto the table, like that, all right? Put the rest of the cards to, just to one side and pick them up so that no one can see them at all and conceal them in your hand, like that. That means I can't see in anywhere. Do you understand that? Don't let anybody see the cards you have taken, all right? Just one card for every hour you thought of. You do that, face down there. I will, of course, look in this direction where the view, if, I, if you don't mind me saying so, is not quite so pretty. It's true, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> You're just trying to chat up Leone, and yes. Now, now, Leone, put the rest of the cards down if you've finished, because I'm looking at him. He can see I can't see what's going off over there. And I, I want you to hold the cards. Have you concealed them? Pardon? Yes, I have. Oh, good. Right. So I can't know what you've got in your hand. I can't possibly know the number that you thought of, but I'm going to use 12 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. One for each hour around the clock. And now I'm going to deal them out. One, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hours. And I'm going to go around that clock. And when I get to the card that you thought of, or the hour that you thought of, just say stop. All right? And I couldn't possibly know. One, two, three, four, five. You thought of six. I don't want to touch that card. I couldn't have known what it was. No? I could, you could have chosen any hour. Turn the card over. And you chose six of hearts. Right? I couldn't have known that. Yeah. No. And yet my prediction quite clearly states, you will not choose the joker. <laughs> What's funny about that? What's funny about that? You will not choose the joker. It's a very serious thing. Particularly when you consider that every other card except the six of hearts is in fact a joker. We turn those over. We turn those over. And now let's join the spectacular puppet world of Compagnie Philippe Jonté.
Remember on the magic shows, we always have a bunko booth in which we con the public out of some money. But it's we give them the money, it doesn't really matter. We thought, however, at Christmas, seeing as how the country is going through an economic little depression, and um, and probably you are along. Are you having a bit of a con? Oh, you must be. Yeah, it must be hard up. No. I'll show you how magic could have helped you. If they'd allowed me to take over, I would have done this. I would have separated Scotland from England completely. You see? And Scotland would have its own parliament, and so would England. It would have its own mint, and so would England. And the money would be different in each country. Now, then what would happen is this. The English, being very stiff or polypish, you see, would keep their pound notes the same. In other words, the English pound note would equal a pound. But the Scottish pound note would only equal 90p. They devalue the Scots pound note. Very proud. Meanwhile, up in Scotland, up here, they would get their own back. The Scottish pound note would equal a pound, but the English pound note, they'd devalue it. They'd make it worth 90p, which is only fair. So, now you understand the rate of exchange in my new government and parliament and things like that, I'd like you to meet a member of our jury who's going shopping. Sir, what's your name? Uh, Terry McNally. Terry McNally. Nice to see you. And, and just step a little closer, because I'm going to make you live in the best house in the world now. You live on the border between Scotland, which is north miles in that direction, and England, which is north miles in that direction. All right? All right. So you are a borderline case. No. <laughs> now, this is the kind of pound note that the Scots issued. It's got a, a tartan cover all over it. And this is the English pound note, which is more or less the same, but uh, now can be shown in black and white. All right? There it is. I'm going to give you a pound note. That's for you. You just keep that there. Oh, you've got your shopping bag. Oh, yes. <laughs> How twee. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just stay at home in your little house, and I'll go and show the people why this new system would be so good. Here is an English shop. Red, white, and blue all over the place, and goodies for sale. The shopkeeper, I'm going to give a Scottish pound note and an English pound note. Now, that doesn't mean you've got two pounds. That means you've got one pound ninety, because in England, it says here, the Scottish pound note is only worth 90p, right? right? Now, if I go to Scotland, you stay at home. <laughs> if I go to Scotland over here, we have got, come a little nearer, uh, we have got this. This is a, a Scotch shop, all right, with a tartan all over the place. <laughs> and some of the places, wow. <laughs> you have got a Scottish pound note as well and an English pound note as well, but you've really only got one pound 90p. Because here in Scotland, an English pound note is worth only 90p. Now, that doesn't mean very much so far, except for this. I'm now going to take 
um, Mr. McNally shopping. Let's go to England and let's buy the goodies that are for sale. All right, go right round to the back of the shop. That's the best way. And I'm going to take a little shopping bag for now. And we're going to buy this, which is a, um, it's a Christmas pudding. Very appropriate Christmas pudding. And we're going to buy this, which is a powder puff. So obviously she saw you coming with the handbag. <laughs> Put that in there. And you, you have to pay for this stuff. But the good news is, because the economy is so good now I've taken over, these only cost 10 pence, the lot. Offer her a pound. You need 90 pence change. So you have offered her an English pound because we're in England. It's worth a pound. But you get one of those back. A Scots pound. It's only worth 90p. You see? You've done a good deal. Yes. Let's go shopping in Scotland. Right. Now, if we go over to Scotland, walk around your living room, and finish up <laughs> over here, look what we've got for sale here. What have we got for sale here? We have got a haggis. <laughs> I kid you not, it's a real haggis. We'll put that in there, and we have got a, um, a scent spray to kill the smell of the haggis. <laughs> now, we'll put that in there, put that on there. Now, by an amazing coincidence, those two items cost ten pence as well. Only ten p. Offer a pound. You're in Scotland. A Scottish pound note is worth a pound. Do have that. We'd like 90p change, please, which is, of course, an English pound note because that's only worth 90p. Now, you go home with your goodies and just stand there while I explain something about the new economy. We've been shopping here. You had £1.90p in goods for sale. You now have got two Scots pound notes in Scotland worth £2. You've made a profit. Over in England, we still have our uh, English shopkeeper, and she's got £2. Now, you started off with £1.90p. You have that, my lovely, while I point out that you started off with £1.90, you've got £2, your goods have gone, you've made a profit. Where have the goods gone? They've gone to the housekeeper, and rightly so. He has got all these goodies which he has bought. It's cost him so far 20p, but he has still got what he started out with, an English pound note. And if Mrs. Thatcher's watching, I'd just like to show Sir Geoffrey how. <laughs> Presenting one of the most sense-confounding problems on the stage today, from America, Harry Blackstone. A piece of lumber that was just cut in half as easily as a hot knife would cut through butter. Because that blade, that 36-inch solid steel lumber saw blade, is made of the finest, sharpest, tempered steel. And that steel blade is connected to a 20-horsepower motor there on top of the frame, capable of revolving our saw blade nearly 2,000 revolutions a minute. Therefore, anyone or anything placed beneath these whirling razor-sharp teeth would certainly suffer the same results that befell this piece of wood just a moment ago. Now, it has been said that in the Himalaya Mountains, they use hypnotism in order to stop the flow of blood during surgical operations. Well, during this next operation of mine, I will use hypnotism as I am about to saw a lady in half with that blade. So help me. And may I introduce our victim, ladies and gentlemen, my wife, Gay. A piece of wood we place into this metal holder and then placing it underneath the lady I want you to see what the saw does to it Thank you. 
ladies and gentlemen, the wood. And the young lady. The show is almost over, but I just thought you might like to know what I got for Christmas from the BBC. I got a Christmas box, but the box they gave me was completely empty. They probably thought I was a magician or something very odd. There's no mirrors inside the box, it's just four walls and, of course, a lid. The lid is over here, and if we show you the lid both sides, you can see that's all there is to that. And if we put the lid on there, you see in the front, the back, all the sides, and we just fasten the lid down. This means that this middle bit is liftable up. And in my Christmas box, my magic Christmas box, of course, I would need something to stand on in order that I could stand on it. There's nothing at all underneath there. There's just a box for me to stand on. Now for Christmas, what did I get? The most silly things you've ever seen. I got four parrots. The parrots didn't talk, but I got four parrots. And of course, I got um, what everybody gets. I got a pair of socks. In fact, I got two pairs of socks. Three, four, five. I got loads of socks. In fact, these, poor Santa must have had them on. <laughs> We've got socks and I got slippers. And I got a nightdress. There we are. Thank you, Cher. Also, I got another pair of slippers to match my eyes. <laughs> and a lemon squeezer. A lemon squeezer? And a box, which doesn't serve any purpose at all, but I got a box anyway. I also got a Paddington bear. Have you ever seen a Paddington bear? That's not a bear, he's dressed. This, of course, is um, what everybody gets at Christmas time, a balloon, catch, you missed it. And we've also got a television set. Now, that last, there was a present worth having, a little television set. And not only that, knowing I couldn't swim, what did Father Christmas send me? He sent me three flippers, one for each foot. There we are. Now, there's something fishy about the next moment of time. Look at those kippers that haven't been smoked yet. What's this? Oh, it's another box. It's another box. There we are, my lovely. Thank you. This, of course, came as a su no surprise, because what else would you find in the cabinet but Margaret Thatcher? And if you've got one Margaret Thatcher, that's no good. You've got to have six Margaret Thatchers. Look at them. Dance, dance. <laughs> and with a Margaret Thatcher, you would expect to find a foot. You're right, folks. The worst joke of the year. A Michael foot. <laughs> These are the jokes, folks. Also in my magic box for Christmas, I got a most unusual thing. A rare work of art. Probably stolen. It is a Mona Lisa. Um, you just take that and have it cleaned and burnt. I also got one of these. Now, this obviously came from Desert Connor. I got... Um, uh, a butlin's red coat. We just have that filed somewhere. And, oh, it's this. Hey, jelly. It's a real one. Look at that. There we are. A real jelly. Not a magic jelly, a real jelly. And would you believe, another box. I'm sick of boxes. So, what everybody would want at Christmas. Oh, it's a balloon. As a matter of fact, there's lots of balloons. Oh, goodness me. Look at this. Catch it. You missed it. This is all part of the fun. Loads of balloons. Now, this is starting to look more like Christmas. A Christmas party. And what would I want here? But have you ever seen a balloon this big? It's a pretty. You just get rid of that over there. There. By Joe, keep hold. You'll go up in the air. That would be a good trick. Also, for Christmas. Now, this was nice, girls. You'll like this. Not a lot, but you will like it. I received this. An Easter egg. And not only that, it was the wrong way up. And this... It's a lovely Easter egg. There we are. You take that. Now put it in a box or a fridge for Easter because it's probably not mine at all. Come here, you fool. There he is, trying to escape. Julius Caesar. My God, he's dead. Here, give him a wreath. Right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know this seems like a load of rubbish, and it is. So, I thought a little fruit at Christmas would be nice. In memory of the chimpanzees, I got a <laughs> Not only did I get a banana, I also received my present from the BBC. This, which was um, three chickens, obviously dressed up to go somewhere. I got a Darth Vader Vesa. I got a pair of, um, hmm, 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 yeah. Told you I'd get, you'd get paid, didn't I? Didn't I tell you get paid? Here, half a nicker for you, half a nicker for you. Right. I got, um, a rock. <laughs> Must be going to build another house. Another rock. And another rock, and another rock, and with the rocks, a pair of gloves. This 
who packed this um, this present? And I, in fact, I got a whole box of rocks. Oh uh, yeah, and of course. Another box. Do have the box. Knowing I have a large garden, somebody at the BBC had a bit of a whip round and got this, which is, of course, some... Uh, what is it? It's a... I suppose it's a Venus or an Aphrodite or something. And I got this, which is... <laughs> but it's something to throw darts at. Hello, Terry, you little... And, and I also received something that I thought at first was a pair of matching earrings. It was, in fact... Um, not a pair of matching earrings, they were genuine Ming vases. Now the presents were getting good. I had some more vases, and I, not only that, I had some more vases. And at last, and this was worth waiting for, a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> okay? Right, afterwards, you may lead me astray. You have the bottle of whiskey, and now, a big surprise. Something I really wasn't expecting for Christmas. I received for Christmas, huh? I know, you thought it was Terry Wogan back again. <laughs> Are you gonna... Oh, I'll put him down there because he's such a lovely little fella. Go on, have a holiday. There it is. <laughs> so, what else goes with Christmas? Of course, you have the pork. Sorry, I didn't say that. <laughs> but not only do you have the pork, but we also have um, another box. This is very strange. But in this box we have got here, there we go, one little duck. Another little duck. Oh, they're lovely. That's it. Catch him. <laughs> Come on, you're a bird. Get all of them. Now, this, this, there's another duck. I'll put him down there. There we are. Go on. The game is called Hunt the Pig. Right. <laughs> That's it. Oh, you really enjoy this bit, don't you? There we are. That's the idea. Down you go down there. And that, hey, lovely. And what would you believe is in nothing? Nothing. Except the biggest load of rubbish I ever got for Christmas in my life. So, I decided to take it up with head office. By taking the catches off the front, taking the catches off the back, and picking on the guy himself. Ladies and gentlemen, Father Christmas! <laughs> wow, Father Christmas, have you changed from last time I saw you? But I've still got a complaint. I really have got a complaint. I never got such a load of rubbish in my life. For Christmas, who would ever want two pairs of slippers or three pairs of flippers or four pairs of kippers. I ask you, a little telly and a wobbly jelly, a Darth Vader blazer. I even got a Butlin's blazer. I got an Aphrodite and I got a flannel nighty somewhere. There it is. I got a Buster Caesar, a Mona Lisa. I even got a lemon squeezer. I didn't want this jar of liquor. I certainly didn't want the ladies' knicker and uh, not a pile of rocks. Who'd want a pile of rocks? I even got ten pairs of socks and six geese are laying. Five all. Mings, four poly birds, three dressed hens, two purple gloves. So what did you really want for Christmas? <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Have a magic Christmas. Paul Daniels is now appearing at the Prince of Wales Theatre, London. And he'll be back on BBC One with his magic show next year.